long ago is it since a picture like this would have been either abhorred or ridiculed. But today, the education of small children in methods of self-preservation is recognized as a humane proceeding. U.S. citizen returning to the United States in the previous 14 days will be subject to up to 14 days of mandatory quarantine. When did you start in comedy? Oh, 1992. Wow. I know. Did Kim just do, give me a double take? She's like, what? Lauren, Lauren just said, wow. <laughs> wow, I did too. I, I didn't know. Uh, yes, you know when yes. I was, my little brother was born. <laughs> I, I first right. saw you on, um, I'm going to tell you when I first saw you, and I can remember the joke that you told. I think you oh, opened with it on Def Jam. That was the first oh. time I saw you, and you said, wow. leg a hand, Lord. I'll never forget it. <laughs> I still do that joke. Yeah, that's good. Wow. it's good. I still do that joke. And, I, and if I don't do it, people get mad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was such a, um, I thought that was so important that you were on that show because, you know, it showed that Black comedians are different and you were really cerebral. And I think that show, you know, while I enjoy all the different comedy, but it was important to have somebody that was cerebral on there, like, so that they could see that we could do all different kinds of comedy you know yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of history to that show for me you know because i it actually wasn't the show i wanted to do i wanted to no i mean <sighs> def jam was very specific and i didn't think my style fit that show mm -hmm. i wanted to do comic justice which was on around the same time and that was hosted by aj jamal and that was where you know the intellectual smart black comics were going and i mm -hmm. they got canceled because why would that last <laughs> Right. So, you know, Def Jam's going on and I get invited to audition and I was like, have you seen me? Like, I don't <laughs> understand. You know, long story short, you know, Kim, they, they said they wanted to do something a little different. And back in the day, a little different was usually me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I always got caught out there because they told me they were looking for something a little different, but they never told the audience. Hey, y'all, we doing something different. They would right. just throw me out there. Um, but I, I screwed up every ounce of bravery I had, you know, and tried to be unapologetically me, you know, because I saw a lot of comics back in the day. They, got, they did the show and they weren't necessarily urban comics. And they, they tried to, you know, do that thing. And it was like, what are you doing? And it wasn't authentic. Mm -hmm. And it didn't go over well. And I'm like, if I'm going to go down in flames, I'm going to go down in flames as me. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. No, I'm not that brave anymore. I'll sell you, out you now. Didn't go Who down. wants to buy me? <laughs> <laughs> so you've gotten a few compliments from the Facebook Live uh, feed. Where's Kevin Sharp says, "Nice pendant, Starfleet Command." I know Thank you're you. talking about Starfleet Command in a little Live while. Live long and prosper, everybody. <laughs> right. Go. And Jess Miller says hi. Hey, Jess. Her love. So you got your your your. Your, your audience is waiting for you. They're all here. Let's talk a little bit about Starfleet Command. Let's talk about Star Trek, if we may. Sure. Can we? Can you do a podcast? I was so surprised by this, but not really. Um, so tell us about this podcast that you're doing. Yeah, it's actually um, a YouTube show, live streaming oh, show sorry. on Saturdays. Oh, no, no, honey, it's fine. The terminology is just interchangeable at this point. Media that you do. Yes. Yeah. It's a, yeah. So it's a Saturday show, live streaming on YouTube. And uh, I didn't create the show. I was sort of brought in. This guy was already doing a, a show called Sci-Fi Saturdays. And I did another, he, I was a guest on another one of his shows. He happened to mention it. He saw my pendant and he's like, are you a Star Trek fan? I'm like, am I a Star Trek fan? <laughs> Sir, I have restraining orders. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he said he was looking for a co-host. He said, would you mind, do you want a co-host with me on Saturday mornings? I said, do I want to get up and talk about nerdy crap? Yeah, yeah, I totally do. And we've been, gosh, it's been maybe like two months now. And it's like every Saturday, you think, that, what could we possibly talk about more Star Trek? We could talk about more Star Trek, you know? And, you know, I mean, everything, Dune, the movies, all of it, you know, like I was really happy with the episode we did for Father's Day. Just last minute, I said, hey, well, why not talk about the dads of Star Trek? 
you know so we Ooh. did a whole episode on the fathers of star trek and the people who had daddy issues on star trek and there was a wow. lot more of those yeah and yeah so it was it was a lot of fun to do because i'm i'm a star trek fan because i like the um it, it it doesn't have that fatalist view it's that who we could be in the future and be be better like human beings actually have a shot you know and have something more to offer than a dystopian future and right now that seems really good so yeah. let me ask you a question about that because I've been waiting for this. So wh how did you, what did you think about uh, the discovery? Star, Star Trek discovery. Oh, I didn't bring it in here with me. Somebody actually sent me the deck plate of what you would put up on the ship that says Star Trek discovery and who the command is Wow, like okay. as a gift. Yeah. Like that could be mounted on my wall because they knew and that was actually my co-host that sent it to me. I love discovery. Warts and all. I know you're about to hit it. I know you're about to be like, wait, hold, but what about, but what about, but what about? I don't care about your what about ism. Michael Burnham is my girl. I, 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 I did like Michael Burnham. I just, the only thing, okay, my problem with that was it was Star Trek. <laughs> Yeah. But it didn't have the philosophy of Star Trek. You know, it was Not more yet. just like it was more like rugged, and mm -hmm. it was more just you know it was it, it, it was missing a lot from you know Star Trek. But it was everything I wanted to see from Star Trek. Like the ship was badass. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And they were just doing things that they couldn't do in a regular universe. So I did like that. But you know, it was very separate from what we knew as Star Trek. Yes, you you also have to place it in its time. Like I don't I don't know if you've gone through. Have you seen Enterprise? The no no I couldn't okay. watch that. When it okay, went well backwards. here's the deal. If you suffered through Enterprise, then you would love this because that was just painful. So you put it in its time, and it's after Enterprise. It's before. Um, the original series, and so not everything is exactly worked out yet. Right. Maybe they haven't completely finished writing the Prime Directive. You know, so there's a lot that you, not a lot, but there's some things where you kind of go, mm, okay, I might let that go. Like, I thought your problem was going to be, you know, they running the ship on mushrooms now? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that's weird. Or right. well, oh, they got yeah. a, they got one girl on the ship. She's the cadet, and she knows how to fix everything. Everything. <laughs> Where's your chief engineer? Seriously, was there a hiring freeze? <laughs> like, what? Well, she was there, a problem. There are real practical questions. I can survive. I can. I wow. can. I, I can actually, you know, accept that because some people are just genius. Most people that end up like on the Enterprise are the best at what they do. So I can figure that they handpick people to be on a discovery because they were the best at what they did. You know, so I can survive. I, I can, I can okay, survive okay. You want backups in case someone gets eaten by, you know, some a tribble, like. Tribble? <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, I think, Leanne, they should be hiring you as a consultant for the oh, show. My, oh, that my That would gosh. be your good job, a good job for you to Wait, have. Leanne, did you did you start with uh, Captain Kirk like we all did, and then you went to the one with uh, LeVar Burton, and then did yes. you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was my that was my trajectory. You know, Star Trek and reruns, of course, because I'm not that old. Uh, yeah. And I watched with my, my the first Trekkie in my life was my mom. I watched I wow. watched Star Trek with my mom because she was all about Captain Kirk. I mean, what what woman wasn't? I know Kirk. Next though. generation girl. I like next. So generation. am I. So yeah. am I. I didn't think that I would, but you know, seven years later, <laughs> we go. Yeah, yeah. I love. I mean, Jean Luc. I loved Ellison. I, oh yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. yeah. He and I rewatched. I rewatched uh, Next Generation last year, and then I rewatched DS Nine, and now I'm rewatching and on season seven of Voyager. Wow! And I think some of it's on Netflix right now too. I think you can uh, catch some of it. Something's on Netflix. Some's on Amazon Prime. I, oh. I just I said screw it. I'm gonna pay this money and be at CBS All Access because <laughs> they they got money. me. They got me. Yeah, shut up and take my money. So does this affect your dating life? Does I mean, does your future mate have to be into sci-fi and, you know, I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, listen, don't, don't, okay, this is, let's pretend COVID's not happening. Don't, please don't see my necklace at the bar and go, oh, you like Star Trek and then start talking to me about Star Wars. You gonna oh, be yeah. dismissed, sir. Get it all twisted Just up. Don't, yeah, don't, oh. don't fake the funk. I would rather you come at me from a place <laughs> of curiosity and go, oh, I don't know that much. I'd like to learn. I'll take that. But don't listen. You can't cross hobbits with Hogwarts. You, you gotta get it right. <laughs> right, right. 
<laughs> you so can't like, nerd wrong with me. Uh, did you like Star? Did you like Star Wars? Or you... of course I did. Okay. I, I like. Now I, I listen. I don't. I don't know what they're doing now. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, what I've crazy. seen the last few movies. What I was awake for. Point taken. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what I was I'm awake at. for. What I was awake for, you know, yeah. and, and again, I think they've done things. You can't, you can't mess with the canon. You can't, if you're going to establish a universe and set up rules, you have right. to abide by those rules. Right. You know, when you break them, that's what upsets fans. Right. So all of a sudden, the force does what? The force is bringing folk back from the dead. You just kissing folks and they got the force. Like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> right. Right. It's all over the place. It needs well, they to come, were, they come were, back. They, the whole thing was them about to try to kill the force, you know, which really like when Luke Skywalker, we, we, he called, he never said lightsaber. He said laser sword. And it was just things like that. And it was just, that just pissed people off. Like they never right. said guns. They always said blasters. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. You know what? And hands shot first. So what are we, right. what are we doing here? Right. You know, so yeah, that's that's what got me all upset with Game of Thrones season eight. No, I'm not over it. I'm sorry. Um, I'm wow. with you on that. See, I'm with you on that, dude. Right. I am. I am. I'm angry. I'm bitter. It's like a bad breakup. I've <laughs> never ever seen it. It was uh, somebody who. It's like they stopped trying instead of just yes! waiting for you early. Yes. They just trying and wait for you to do it. Like Evan's oh. asking, the force is an STD. <laughs> very good perhaps and it's with Forces you with this one yeah <laughs> yeah no, this, yeah season see, well season seven and then really the abomination of season eight you know I, I remember sitting there like is this this is what you do with my love this is right. my love and my dedication <laughs> and you just gonna throw that away oh okay all right I'll see <laughs> I, was, <laughs> well, I, I was just behind everybody else so then I like just binged the last few seasons years and years oh. later and I just was able to not care as much it didn't hit me as hard yeah no i was i was invested i was I, like I, that monday you know i called my therapist it's like we need to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then i couldn't talk to her because she's like yeah that was bad and i'm like okay see i need somebody who's objective <laughs> i rewrote that whole last season man in my head i rewrote that whole last season i know i was talking to people on the bus about it you know I people know, right? talking to me right. they stopped talking to me people unfriended me because i was like look man let me Let's talk about Game of Thrones, man. <laughs> Listen, you know, I used to I used to tease my dad because no matter what you were talking about with my dad, he would bring it back to the Brooklyn Dodgers. Oh. Every time it was magic. He, you could be talking about taxes, you could be talking about politics, and my dad would somehow bring it back to the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> and I would tease him about this. And now with me, it was Game of Thrones. So we could be talking about the election, and I'ma tie it into why Cersei. <laughs> Really should have been queen. I see. The same thing. Right. A couple so friends. It's all back to thing. Star Trek. Yes, it's all back oh. to Star Trek for Kevin Sharp. Oh, yes, it's back to Star Trek. But, but Star Trek, right? What did you think of the uh, John Luke show? The, the, John the, the Luke. Picard, the oh, Picard. Oh, oh, Picard. oh, right, Picard. Right. <sighs> <laughs> wow. Well, okay. No. Well, here's the thing. Listen, I'm a Star Trek fan, which means I'm a patient woman. Okay. Okay. Because you know those first two seasons. Look at the first two seasons of Next Generation. Whoo, that wasn't great. Yeah. Okay. It really, it wasn't great. But Star Trek fans, we are so thirsty and so supportive. We will hang in there. Now, I'm not saying Picard was bad. I Listen, I love seeing my Jean-Luc. Like, my stripper name would be Earl Grey Hot. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I totally... Oh, <laughs> I totally love him, you know, and I, I actually like the story that they built. You know, I think I'd like to see a little more. I feel the ending was a little rushed, right. you know, and again, because of what was it, eight episodes and we're used to what, 23, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 24, you know, but he is, he's in his 70s for a dude in his 70s. I'm like, you know what, he could get it. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sir Stewart, you've got some work to do. We he knows that. Right? He, no, he I knows. have work to do. I need to tone up. Cause he's in shape. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Like, let me give me give me a couple months to get it back in shape before we have coffee. Oh my God, him with Anthony Hopkins. I don't even know. It's mm. crazy. Can't even do it. 
it's, but no, short answer i did tim i did like the show i okay. I, I did you know not as much as enterprise though uh, yeah i, I Le- wanted to like it i'm sorry excited. not enterprise discovery 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 I, I was excited i wanted to like it and not that i didn't like it but you know like you said it was kind of you know it's kind of underwhelming you, you know it has yeah, to it was it was all, it was a bit of candy it was you know right. thank you for the treat it was well i'm saying like this because do we really need to see that from Picard? Like, it's, you know, I don't know. It's like, uh, I don't know, when they made the Tupac movie. You know, it, <laughs> you know, it was like well, all they show at the end was how Tupac was this thug. I'm like, do we really need to see that? Like, you know, so. You know, I, I, again, I, lo- I love Star Trek. I love that he can still do that work. I love the exploration of the Romulan side because we haven't had that before. The shot Vash. I'm like, are they hiring? <laughs> amazing <laughs> look at those outfits that that was a little yeah. you know dune crossover for me with the with the uh the benny jesuit witches i'm like did y'all go to the same costume shop yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see now y'all can see why i'm single because i am this nerd conversant i i see this became nerd fr- nerd fest yeah, before I'm we so even sorry. knew it was gonna happen no it's good it's all good but Le- about this. so how is it like <laughs> So, you, but you, how do you, how is it podcasting? I don't know. Are you building kind of, I don't know, like how, how do you build, how do you build a podcast? Sounds like you have a few. She has a few. I do. I mean, well, the, the one that's mine that I started, I created in that, that, that I run uh, hands on all by myself is uh, people with parents. And that's about the role reversal. What you're shaking your head. Like what? Like who doesn't have parents? Parents. <laughs> Wait, that, well, that's why I picked that title, because everybody's got parents, but it's at, about that stage of your life, about the role reversal between adult children and aging parents. And I yeah. don't think a lot of people talk about that. You know, like all of a sudden you're going along with your life and your parents are your parents, they're fine and fine, and then they're not. Yep. You know, what happens when they get sick? What happens when they need you? What happens when they're asking you stuff that they taught you? that they forgot. It's like, what? Like, you trying to mess with me? Like, what's happening? (laughs) And so it's a very, it's a different experience and it can be exhausting, you know, particularly if you're in that sandwich generation, if you're, you've, if you've got, your parents are aging, you've got kids who don't love you. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because they're not trying to make your life easy at all. Right. Um, So yeah, I, I saw, I started a podcast about that simply because my parents were aging and I had no idea what the hell was happening. Like, how do I deal with this? And it was, so it was really selfish. It was just putting these stories out there to see, you know, if it resonated with anybody. And it did, you know, I didn't realize how many people were in this situation and dealing with this. And, you know, some of it's advice, some of it's how to have uh, that compassion and that shift in point of view. Um, Some of it is just, you know, letting go of the logic and here are the crazy little stories that happened between me uh, and my family, like a couple of years ago. I had like a three episode, I didn't start out that way. It just happened, a three part uh, episode series about uh, what I called um, the Urban Shady Pines Summer Peace Accords. Uh, Cause the house, the, the, see, cause we live, this is a multi-generational house. And this is a very simple question. What temperature do you keep the house at when you have people who live in it from different generations? And my dad was always cold, okay? So I, t- I think I was telling Laura this. I woke up in the middle of the night one night, July. I'm like, is this menopause? I was, I, 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 I couldn't believe the heat. My dad had turned the heat on in oh, July. God. Oh, God. Because he was cold. And the, <laughs> and the battle was on. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was on. Because the therm- at the time, the thermostat in the Stu family house was in his part of the house. So I would come downstairs, I would switch the setting, and I would look at him like, don't you touch that thermostat. <laughs> the minute you walk you, away. The minute I walked away. The Damn. minute I walked away. And so I upped the ante and switched the thermostat to one I could control from my phone. Yeah. Woo. I, I hear you word. with that. I had to tape that shit shut. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> When I go back to New this. Orleans, there are two zones, right? <laughs> so they would look out my own zone, and but yeah, it's yeah, it's, no, it was it was real. And in Houston, I didn't. I'm doing these little, you know, podcasts. I don't know who's paying attention. I'm. If you ask me what my numbers are, I don't know. I'm just creating and putting it out there. Whoever it resonates right. with, it resonates with. Um, 
I had a, that summer I was emceeing at a conference and I show up at the conference, you know, a day early to get adjusted. I'm seeing, I'd done the conference before, everybody knew me. And they're like, hey, Leanne, how you doing? So what's going on with the thermostat? Like, <laughs> like it was this cliffhanger that I didn't know people were invested in, you know, but so many people are, are live with that or either understand that or they like the way I told the story because it's like, oh man, you touched that thermostat one more time. <laughs> You know, and this is my dad. This is somebody, you know, he raised me, but like, it's 90. Right. It's 90 degrees in the house, old man. This is not funny. And he's got on long sleeves, long johns, putting on jacket, talking about, who is chilly. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate it because I do think, especially when you uh, take on being the caretaker of parents, which I was a couple times, um, it's, it's a little bit isolating. It's, a, it's yes. hard. You feel like you're the only one. And your yes. friends are all out doing other things. So, so you think. Right. It's, it's kind of like now. It's like the pandemic. It's like, is everybody out having a good time? It's right. Like, no, they out getting COVID. So you're right. fine. If you're in your <laughs> yeah. house, you doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. But it's good to, to hear that, you know, to have that podcast, I think, because it, it can be, you can laugh about it sometimes. Sometimes it's really ridiculous, right? Yeah. We were talking before about like, no, mom, you can't have ice cream for breakfast. No, you can't have McDonald's for dinner twice a week. No. And then it's like, well, what? Why, why not? Would, you know what? After, right. after 80? Right. It, here, here's my thing. If, if, you, if, it really, if it's not something that's going to make you sick, right. then I'm not going to. Right. Because there's some stuff. I'm like, if I'm with you at the emergency room, we need to make some changes. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, because now this is affecting my life. Uh, but yeah, I actually remember one night my dad, he, he woke up with a stomach ache and it had to be really bad because he called me that he's from that generation. His arm could be hanging off <laughs> yeah. and he's talking about, no, it's fine. I just need some duct tape, right. you know, or the house is on fire. No, I just need a cup of water, baby. You go on. I'll be fine. So I knew if he called me, it had to be bad. Yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't in New York. I was in New Jersey and I you're not supposed to get from that part of Jersey. I was in Hasbro Heights. You're not supposed to get from there to Queens in 20 minutes. Uh, but I did. It was just, I, I'm like, the cops just going to have to catch me. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, with, they're, they're like, y'all just put the, put the sirens on. Let's go. Keep up. It just so I, a bunch of bills later and you're like, right. Exactly. Whatever. So I, I told him to hang up for me, call the ambulance. I didn't trust him. I called the ambulance and it's, it's weird. You learn weird stuff. Like you can't call interstate. It, it's just bizarre. They take it more seriously if it's chest pains and stomach ache. Yep. So I said whatever I had to say to get that old man to the hospital. That's it. I show up at the hospital and it was so, it was him and my mom. And I said, I just walk in, I go, are there two cute old people here who were very charming? They go, yes, right here. <laughs> Because they are, they're very, they're very charming. They're, the way my self-defense is humor, so is theirs. Aww. So they're being funny, they're cracking jokes. You know, my dad's in a hospital gown going, yeah, I just want to have a party, Ugh, whatever. <laughs> so it turned out he ate something he wasn't supposed to eat. Shocking, that's my dad. He never lets food go to waste, you know. Since he, you know, growing up poor affects you. So he would eat anything. And my dad, there's mold on that. He goes, yeah, that's kind of silly. That is silly. Yeah. So it's, it's five o'clock in the morning. They discharge them. I'm taking them home. My dad goes, well, since that turned out all right, can we hit Burger King? <laughs> <laughs> of no, course. sir. No, we are not going to Burger King, sir. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> what was it like growing up with this family? Because they're all funny. They sound like very funny people. My parents were funny as hell and intentionally so. Like there were moments when they didn't mean to be funny. But yeah, I, they, they were storytellers. And so I feel like I grew up with a lot of love and a lot of laughter, a lot of discipline because my family's was studying. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think I would be further along in my career, you know, had my parents been, you know, more abusive and maybe not as supportive <laughs> and loving, you know, but more how damaged. do you, right, and, how uh, do you rebel against all this love and support? It's just really, <laughs> nobody wants to know my story. It's like, what, you had two parents and you went to private school and they loved you? <laughs> That's hilarious. What that else you got? Hilarious. I'm just saying, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> you have siblings? If that... Yes, I have two older brothers. So I'm the baby. You do? I... Yeah, I know, right? Well, see, I'm not the only child, but I'm the only one they like. So oh. I never... <laughs> 
I okay. never talk about them. Wait, are these brothers single? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, one's me and my oldest is married. Uh, and the other one, girl, you don't, you don't want none of that. <laughs> <laughs> like run, girl, run. Like, Sorry, Jim. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> okay. Damn. Okay. <laughs> And like and he's yet, got cats and I'm nervous. Like you don't oh. have anything living. <laughs> oh my goodness. So many things to ask you. It's the quarantine Wait, call and I, show. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. yes. Leanne, you're such a good writer. So I'm thinking that there's some sort of sci-fi comedy on the horizon. Is <laughs> the case? No, there isn't. But now that you've put it on my ever growing to-do list, thanks yes. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm definitely down for that. You know yeah, me saying? too. I want to be all, all I'm all about it. Yeah. Even if I be what? like man in quarter number three, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? There's a there is a funny sci-fi show. Uh, not not Joss. Um, it's it looks like it's Star Trek, but it's oh, not. Um, uh, with uh, Seth. Um, yes, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, yeah. I watched all that too. I thought it was pretty oh. good. I thought it was hilarious. I was prepared to be mad, you know, like yeah. they're being all sacrilegious. And they're like, no, it, they had me from episode one yeah. where the brother on the ship was like, okay, listen, can I have soda on the bridge? I was yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, 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 struck, it struck just the right tone, just Orville. enough humor. Orville. Orville. The, yeah. the Orville. Yes. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> That's great. So it's the quarantine call in show. This is the half point or a little bit over the half point of the show. It's Laura Grant with Tim Lovett, Kim DeShields, Lauren Kaling, and our special guest, Leanne Lord, want to open up the doors or the, the box to uh, entertain any questions anybody might have for Leanne. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to call it, the box. She said, Anymore. open the box. That's open the box. Yeah. Like, <laughs> open that box. I don't, I don't think you meant to say that. <laughs> no, I meant yeah, to say that. Yeah, that could go. Oh, I mean, no, I, I, am, I am single, but yeah, let's <laughs> ease back on that, Liz. <laughs> Uh, Y'all gonna make my portal. job hard for security. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, even if it wasn't the pandemic, I am a little, little selective. <laughs> <laughs> and surely you should be, mm -hmm. right? Lauren, you had your hand up. You have a question? I have a question. I have a question. Veryfunnylady.com is an awesome website. That's my Thank question. You. That's not a question. <laughs> no, that, like, how did you get that domain name? That is like impressive. I Nobody this was back that. in the day. I log. I checked it. It was available. I said uh, yes, please. I'll purchase that. The first funny, because <laughs> first very funny lady. Yeah, well, slightly amusing lady wasn't available. <laughs> so, and I figured I should be aspirational about this. So, <laughs> makes sense. Your vocabulary is everything. Let me just say that. It's everything. She's My dad used to too. write down words in a book because he was very. He was all about words. So I'm, I, you are smart well, I, as fuck. <laughs> I, thank you. And I, I, I that, that's, that comes from a couple of things. My parents were very intellectual. Um, my mom wrote letters, you know, my dad in another life, he probably should have been an author, you know, so he wrote stories. He wrote very beautifully. And, you know, we used to say, this was like the family slogan. You can't be a dumbass and live in this house. Like, it was just, <laughs> like you, you just weren't going to make it. You know, you had to get up to speed pretty quickly. And, and both were voracious readers. So, you know, my mom taught me how to read. I knew how to read when I was four. You know, I went to school and I'm like, y'all don't know how to read. What's going on here? <laughs> wow. Like, like I want to go home. <laughs> And then I became, when I went to college, I was, uh, uh, my second major uh, was journalism and creative writing. So like, I just, words were just my, you know, my thing. It just, I, cause I, I remember being young enough that I didn't have enough words to express how I was feeling. And I remember being angry about that. And I'm like, I need more words. I was like eight. Like, I, <sighs> wow. <laughs> like these adults aren't getting what I'm saying. You just wait, you give me some time. <laughs> And so, yeah, so I, I do have a, a love of words. I appreciate it, though, when you put those words up in the definitions and everything. I really appreciate that. I love it. So amen and thank God. Thank you. Speaking of words, you've written some books. So can you, you talk about those books a little bit? I sure can. I sure can. Um, well, right off of, uh, Kim, what you were you're saying, my uh, I wrote a book called Dick Jokes, and that's D-I-C-T. Wait, I have it. I have one. Dick Jokes. 
Available on Amazon. It's available on Amazon. You can yes. order, you know, uh, paperback copies for me and get the bonuses. You get them autographed. Um, but it, but yeah, no. So I w there's volumes one and two. Uh, only two is only available on Amazon, and it's um, it's alter alternate definitions for words you've probably never heard of, but will probably never forget. And that again, that came out of such a nerdy place. Like I, when I was a kid, I, I had these type of parents where if I came across a word I didn't know, they would make me look it up. Yeah. Like what? Like, and I'm not talking pick up your phone. I'm talking get up, walk over to the bookshelf, because we have bookshelves, right? Yep. Big ass. <laughs> yeah. Right? And just, it is. right. And you, and you, listen, you didn't know how to spell it. <laughs> so a lot of times I didn't want to make that trek. And I would try to figure out what the word meant from what it's how it sounded. I was usually wrong, but it was fun. And I kept doing that my entire life. You know, so I would eventually started posting those. Um, Kim, that's probably what you mean. I started posting those on Facebook and people thought it was funny. You know, they would come up with their own alternate definition. They were like, I think it sounds like this. And I'm like, here's the thing. It could be whatever you think it is. Like, there's no rule to this. And someone suggested, as actually Joanna Briley said, you should do a book. And I was like, what? And when I look back and I, you know, how many I had posted, I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's two books, actually. And I had so much fun. I had so much fun putting it in. It's so nerdy. It's oh, wow. Men easy Mensa thing does to that. Do. You're right. M Mensa does it too. So you, they have like a contest, I think, every year. You should definitely. <laughs> oh, that's big leagues. Words yeah. That's big yeah. leagues. Yeah. That's but you know what? In there. Here's what, I, here's what I love, and this, here's what people don't know about the book until they, they see it and they pick it up. Um, I give you the, the real word and its actual definition, and it's part of speech. So you can mess around and actually learn something, but I don't tell people that. I, don't, I just want, you know, the learning is like, that's like on the down low. Like, I don't Edutainment. want you to- Edutainment. Yes, yeah. very much so, very much awesome. so. Awesome, awesome. That's yeah. great. And journalism was your second major. What was the first? Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> you caught that. I went to school originally as a finance major. I wanted to work on Wall Street and be oh. be in the pit. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. It was. Yeah. So yeah, how I'm, you, you were, I'm how gonna you need some, some stock tips. <laughs> oh, girl, I used to listen. I was one of those kids. I went away to like those little summer business camps. You know, my 18th birthday. My parents said, "What do you want?" I'm like, "I want an IRA." They were like, "What?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was such a little weirdo. And then I, I, you know, you go to college and college is that time where you're supposed to learn, explore and change your mind. And I'm like, yeah, this is it for me. You know, my real true love was writing and performing. And that's what I spent four years doing, three years doing. Awesome. When, how did you know you wanted to be a comedian? When did that start up for you? I don't know if I would have called it being a comedian, but I know that, um, in school, I was, I, was, I was smart and I did my work and I was funny looking, you know, I had glasses, I had braces, I was really super skinny. And so magnet for getting picked on. And by sixth grade, I was kind of tired of it. And I said, how can I circumvent this? I did know the word circumvent when I was 11. Um, <laughs> how can I make this cease and desist? And I thought, you know, maybe if I'm funny, maybe if I poke fun at myself before they can, it won't hurt as much and they'll stop bothering me or they're, they'll think I'm funny and actually like me. And that all happens. Uh, Cause the, the other uh, 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 option was to stop doing my work, but my family's <laughs> West Indian and uh, getting anything less than an A was not gonna yeah. cut it. So yeah. I went the funny route. And so it was, it, was a, it was a very me decision. It was a very logical step by step. I will be funny now. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm 11 making life decisions, you know, but it, it worked out and it just, that just kept snowballing and it kind of helped me develop a little bit of, I don't know, humor and personality. I got to high school, like people who went to high school with me, like they thought I was going to be on Saturday Night Live by junior right. year, you know. So did you, so you describe kind of feeling like an awkward 11 year old definitely can relate. Did you have a second awakening when you're like, whoa, I'm cute, like what's that what's happening and by that time you already got the personality yeah that came way later because i, I I'll, I'll, I'll relay a conversation to you i had with my dad i had to be about 12 or 13 
and I was moping around and my dad, he, he was so sweet. He was really trying to figure out what was wrong with me, but I didn't know how to explain how I was feeling. I just felt awkward. I felt like the boys didn't like me. I didn't even know why I wanted them to like me, but it just bothered me that they didn't. And so, you know, my dad kind of figured it out and he said, baby, you're beautiful. And I said, you have to say that because you're my dad. So then he took another tact. He goes, okay, listen, we got glasses, we got braces. We, this is a construction project. By the time we are done with you, <laughs> you are going to be where you need to be. <laughs> and so I really felt, I, I literally thought, I said, I will never be attractive. I will never be beautiful. Oh. I will, you know what? I should, I, I can be, I can be smart. I can be well-read. I can be like all those other things. So it wasn't until I kind of got contact lenses and I think that really changed how I saw me, not how other people saw me. Uh, and that wasn't until I was 17. And then my, my first year of college where guys are talking to me and I don't understand why. I'm like, do you want me to help you with your homework? Like, why are you? <laughs> like, I didn't get it. I really didn't. I'm like, it, 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 what? You think I'm, I'm, I'm cute? It was like that scene from Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer. She thinks I'm cute. <laughs> <laughs> and you flew away. Yeah, I flew away with a little red nose. It was fantastic. Um, <laughs> So no, that, because that came later, I, God, I gotta say, I was in my twenties before I really understood that people thought that I was attractive. And then I, by then I was doing comedy and I'm like, being attractive is the last thing I want to be. I want y'all to hear these jokes. So I'm wearing hats and big boxy jackets and going, I'm not a girl. Don't look at me that way. It was just ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. That can complicate things if you're too sexy, right? It can't. Well, well I, don't, I don't know, but I'm just saying. Girl, you better stop. I'm, I've seen you work it, girl. Gorgeous <laughs> women. Well, Both of you. What eventually had to happen was I had to be comfortable in my skin and my body. Yep. You know, and so, yeah, I'm not getting on stage wearing, you know, plunging necklines and mini skirts, but I'm going on stage dressed like a grown ass woman. Right. I'm not trying to hide anything. And, you know, I'm, I'm walking on stage with confidence and no, I don't want your man. You know, because that's what they used to say back in the day. Oh, a woman in the audience might think you want her man. I mean, this right. is ridiculous advice. Yeah. You know, but it really is the confidence that you walk on stage, which is being comfortable in your own skin and delivering, standing and delivering with some level of command where people go, it's not even about what you're wearing. It, is, it, is it part of the packaging? Yes, I'm all about packaging. Because mm. uh, what else are we doing here, everybody? Like people, no, seriously, I was talking about this the other day. I'm like, you leave your house. People have to look at you. She was this talking is, to me. Okay. I <laughs> agree is, with this, that. Is, this is a public were, service. I like agree you should with be that. <laughs> You're walking out like buckwheat half the week, you know. Hey, listen, if that's hair. if that's who you listen, my whole thing is be who you are. A lot of comics started dressing down intentionally on stage because they maybe they were fans of David Tell or maybe they were striving for some sort of casual like what be you. If you was wearing a suit, wear a suit. Right. You know, you can't, everybody can't look like they just finished cleaning their garage. <laughs> That's See? not going to work for everybody. That's what I be telling Boney. I'll be like, when I come out with my, my, my loud jackets or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That's me. I am coming hey. to your house. She's going to beat you. your ass. And kill you. <laughs> oh, we having a blanket party? Woohoo! Oh, God. Who we going to be? Oh, <laughs> Man, I'm not yes. saying anything else about Lynch. the blanket party. I always yeah. change my address. I I moved three times since I met Kim. <laughs> <laughs> no, but your confidence, your intellectual power, and your talent is enough. But you are physically beautiful, also. It's just a you know. I I think you are you know just like Kim is, just like Lauren is. Like, beauty is is multi dimensional. It's not just looking cute no. it's, it's it, all of that inside yeah. it's a it's a confidence and we were i think we were talking yesterday you know that a a, a, a switch flips after yeah. a certain age you know where you have this i'll call it confidence but you also have this uh you're not putting up with no no nonsense anymore that's right and i think that affects how you move through the world so yeah i could be out here in a t-shirt and sweats you're not gonna step to me you know, like I'm some random chick in the street. Like that's because it's what you're you're exuding. Now, you know, some people got no class, but whatever. Um, that yeah. So I, I I I appreciate that. I try. I do try. You know, good makeup helps. You know, Sephora has me. 
they really do. Good lighting helps. Mm -hmm. You know, you throw in some alcohol. I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we talk about hanging in there? I wanted to get that in before we're running out of time. But I oh just my goodness, yeah, we are. But. Uh, well, okay, hanging in there is everybody else's fault. Um, I, everybody keeps saying, Leanne, how come you don't have a YouTube show? How come you're not doing a live stream show? And I'm like, I, I didn't have anything I thought I wanted to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but I said, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna give this a shot. And the, the title hanging in there refers to what's going on right now, where you ask anybody how they're doing and everybody goes hanging in there. Mm -hmm. And you know exactly what that means. And you may not know exactly what it means for them, but you know how that feels. And so that's what the show uh, is about. The first episode debuts on Tuesday. I'm doing a watch party. It's 7-7, seven, seven, so July 7th at 7 p.m. Doing a YouTube watch party. And it's a short show. It's like 20 minutes. It's me ranting. And the, the episode for this show, this episode is, uh, I'll, I'll say, Blacksit, which is a play on uh, Brexit. And that Brexit is the... Uh, um, the UK leaving the European Union, this is about black people leaving the United States. Like how many people are really gonna leave or thinking about leaving? Cause I kind of did a little poll. I said, hey, how many of y'all are thinking about leaving? And I was stunned. I was stunned at the response. I'm like, you know what? This is enough to do, to talk about uh, and do a show. So great. That's, 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 awesome. that's on Tuesday. Thank that you. I'm on apartments.com looking for apartments in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, the year of return has been extended. Yes, indeed, yeah. Whew. Oh, that's great, though. I, I'm excited. So Tuesday, Tuesday is also Blackout Tuesday, if, uh, you know, so wearing black, no money to white enterprises, right? We're just blacking out Tuesday, right? Well, then y'all could uh, green in that money with me. Yeah, oh, yeah. We'll do it okay. beforehand, beforehand, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll send it to you, yeah. Um, you know, I try to do a dry run of that, like not spend money for a day. It's a lot harder than you actually think. You know what I'm saying? Like coffee, Starbucks, they got me, you know, um, uh, with, you know, lunch, you know what I'm saying? Oh. It, it's very hard. Ooh. not you still, you still messing with Starbucks? No oh my way. God. I'm not, yeah, I make coffee in my kitchen and I tip myself. I'm very kind. Um, <laughs> I got an addiction to caffeine. That's just my thing. So, you know? Cafe so Bustello. So or go <laughs> Buy black owned, support There's black a, owned .com. I, I feel bad. There's a comic. I remember I saw her uh, at Caroline's and I feel bad because I can't remember her name, but she did this joke. She goes, have you ever left your house? She goes, I left my house. I went to the grocery store. I came home. I spent $50. It's like what, what just happened? Like, how did I spend that much money mm -hmm. in two blocks? You know, and that's, I don't know if that's New York city living or everywhere, but yeah, dude, I, I wake up in debt. Right. <laughs> like, like, woo, woo, this AC feels good. Oh, damn, this bill, this bill. Right. Yeah, right. I remember, I remember I, when I first started, I took over the bills of the house and I got a water bill and I'm like, who is showering in here every day? <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, I'm going to get some Febreze and oh. we're going to trade off. Oh, God. <laughs> I feel you, yo. Yo, these, yo, these real world bills are no joke. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. All courtesy flushes stop now. <laughs> <laughs> After 6 p.m., you can hold it till the morning. Oh. Wait, no, it's cheap to flush at night. Only flush at night. Only is it flush really? At night. I think, but there are things where it's like, oh, this is the time of day everybody does their laundry, so you're not, so don't take oh. a shower. Oh. There's, there's time, or like it's really hot out. Everyone's running the AC, so wait until later to do something with electronics. That makes sense. That makes sense. Like there are times when there's it, like everybody in the whole neighborhood is on Wi-Fi, and it's like, really, y'all? Yeah, y'all couldn't have checked with me first. <laughs> Especially <laughs> during morning COVID, is probably right. <laughs> Who you isn't on Wi-Fi? Do like I do. I just go around my house and unplug shit. Like you ain't using it. Girl. <laughs> Girl. There's a commercial about people turning into their parents, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's me. Like I'm at the when I go to the grocery store, I'm like, how did I spend a hundred dollars on groceries? Like what? Yeah. So yeah, so easy. And, and, and even if I'm being careful, I, know. I spend yeah. more. I don't get <laughs> it. No, I don't, I don't know what happened. Yeah, I'm. Not, I walk around the house turning off lights. It's like, yep. And I have that look that my father used to have on his face. It's like, yes, why, yes, why that look. Light on? Why is the light on? Are you in here? Because like, <laughs> you, because you, you're, you're, you're looking at the light. You're thinking about the bill. Right. <laughs> 
true. It's true. So several other things to promote. I know. Let's let's run off the list. I we have point of inquiry. We didn't talk about that tonight. Oh, it's okay. Point that's of inquiry. Okay. We have a bunch of things. I put all the links on our page tonight so people can check you out. What is the link for seven seven at seven? What is which one is that? Is that at Funny Lady or is that? Uh, that well, you can yeah, you can get to it definitely by going to Very Funny Lady. It's the top post. Um, okay. On my on my calendar. Uh, but it's also, um, I send it, I send it to you. It's the last thing I sent to you. So it's the last one. I'll send it again. Yeah. Yeah. Leanne, yeah, you're I've, so dope. You're so dope. I just want to uh, tell you, if I haven't told you in the past, I really, I appreciate you. You repping for black women. I just sweat you so hard. You're everything. Yeah. Okay. And I, and, and so here's so funny. I feel the same way about you. I mean, comedy uh -oh. as a weapon. Come on now. That is just, I'm like, that's why Tim. did I think of that? That's awesome. That's, that's all Tim. I would love to take credit for that. I still want to smack him, but he did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you, you are, you're, listen, you know how hard this is. And yeah. I don't even know what this is now, you know, with the pandemic and all, but you're, you're, you hustle, you know, you're doing it all. This is not an easy gig, you know, no, to have definitely. any, any amount, any amount of investment in terms of time, in terms of talent. It's like, you know, hats off. I just and I just a, recognize the rest of the crew too, because they, oh. Laura puts in a lot of work, and she yes. is an ally. She's a, she's a serious ally for Black people, and Lauren as well too. She she works hard behind the scenes, and she's you know she's building up her comedy too, so she's doing really good. And Tim, I hate giving him credit for anything, but yeah, <laughs> he works hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. That's listen. That's why I, I was on a I was on a Zoom call right before this with my friends, and I'm like, okay, y'all, I gotta go. I have a radio call, and with them, I was wearing a T-shirt. My hair was out. And I was like, no, I gotta get ready. Ooh. <laughs> so we are so lucky. But we I, are I, blessed. I do want to say one thing to you, uh, Leanne. Um, it seems like when this uh, pandemic hit, it was just like your transition to do other things was just effortless. You yeah. know, no, what I mean? sir. Oh no, yeah, sir. I said it seemed. I mean, I know it's always you know hard work behind the scenes but it just okay not 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 just hard not just hard work but hard realizations i spent plenty of time on my couch in tears because i felt like I, there was that span of time where i was just canceling gigs off my calendar like that like and not not just comedy gigs but corporate gigs like all this like just like i'm like they were crickets on my calendar i'm like what am i supposed to do now because even the side hustles yeah. Got and it's like, what? I, and I didn't know how to function. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, I take comfort in the fact that nobody knows. You know, we're all trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. So I, I really, I really didn't know how to navigate this. I still don't know how to navigate this. I'm just moving. Because mm -hmm. if you think about what we do, it's always a hustle. Mm -hmm. Now it's in just in a different way. Now, I'm, now I'm in my house more and I'm hustling in my, in my square. I'm trying to own my square, you know, I'm saying yes to Zoom shows and, and mm -hmm. live streams and, and just trying to, to make a way. And is, it, is that really any different from when we started? You know, oh, now did I think I'd have to be doing this at this point? Right. I did not. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm so tired. <laughs> okay, oh, so my turn to, my turn to be mushy. Like, I just feel like I get to sit at the big kids table and learn so much from every guest that you all bring on. Um, so thank you for like putting this show together, but thank you, Leanne, for being on here. I just like got so much out of today. And I always yes. do. This. This is I'm, I'm glad I don't feel like I've said anything, but if you got oh. something, you know, I, I remember that feeling. I remember being at the comic strip in that moment when the big kids talked to me. Like they could see me, like Henriette Mantel, Wally Collins, Phil me, and I'm like, y'all can see me. I'm not <laughs> invisible. And they were, there were just some people in comedy that were so generous and so giving of themselves and their time, you know, that I, I just had a lot of people help me along the way. And I guess I say a lot because those that didn't, I don't see them. You know, you could put a lot of energy in what people don't do. Right. That don't, that doesn't help me. It does, the energy I spend being mad about something else means I'm not writing a joke. I'm not figuring out what my next book is. I'm not figuring out what my next opportunity is. And you can't wait for anybody to give it to you. It just doesn't work that way. That's right. You know, somebody wants to sweep in and give me a book deal. Great. I got two book, book ideas on, on the burner. What, what are we, what are we doing? So you have to be ready for the opportunities. And by ready, it means you're always working. 
you're always trying to figure out where your skill set fits. So the pandemic ain't nothing but a hiccup. <laughs> You're amazing. I just Amen. so grateful, yeah. so grateful to have you here. You're an inspiration. You're a blessing to us. I really appreciate you spending time with us tonight. Come back anytime. We would love to have you come back. Yes, um, indeed. I would. I would love to. Thank you for the opportunity to dress up on a Sunday evening. Hey. And have <laughs> and have a nice conversation and hear people cheerlead me. And I'm like, what? I was <laughs> I was a mess yesterday. Like I'm in the corner. Whoa, it's me. And then you know you dig yourself out. You know. But thank you, thank you for because you never know how people see you. And so I'm 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 grateful for that. Y'all gonna help me get through the week on this. this is we are <laughs> all I got the energy now. The connection has been made. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining That's us tonight on the Quarantine Call-In Show. Thank you, Tim, Kim, Lauren and Leanne. Tune in next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. We will have Stacy Diaz. Good night, Woo! everybody. Thank okay, you. Bye. Good night. Anytime you want to talk Star Trek, you know how to find me. <laughs> Any U.S. citizen returning to the United States will be subject to up to 14 days of mandatory quarantine. Got that vaccine, third eye clean, we visine. Dancing off the top rope, we dug the off them high beams. Running hard like track meets, debutantes and back seats. Nine cents for player P, my piss test with five. Double parts on planet Mars, they surf the net, we surf the stars. Quarantine in Zanzibar, breathing on the masses, paper like.